Are drill Merita am audible? Yes, sir. It's okay. Yes, I will change the uh, timings of tomorrow class according. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So, uh, in the last class, we have discussed this uh, free body diagram and some forces. So, this was the last question that we were solving. Huh? We haven't finished. So, does anyone of you got the answer of first part and second part? Adil, Marita, did you get the answer of these two parts? No. Okay, let's solve it together. See, let's solve the first part. So in the first part, you're supposed to calculate friction. Adriel, what's the formula for calculating friction? Let's say limiting friction. So mu, mu C into N. Mu will into normal reaction. Marita, what will be the normal reaction in this case? The first case? The one which the wall exerts on the body. Hmm. And how much is that? That would be equal to the weight or that would be equal to this force F. Yes, Marita, that will be equal to the weight of the body or normal reaction will be equal to the force. See, this is the normal reaction, just which is wall so is exerting the, the body. force. Yeah, so normal reaction will be equal to the force. See, this this is the wall, eh? and I'm pressing this block towards the wall with a force of 20 newton, and the block is not moving. That means this face is balancing the block with the same. Force. So normal reaction. So friction is equal to mu n. So friction is mu, which is 0 0.2 into normal reaction, which is 20. So this is equal to 4. This is the force of limiting friction. Similarly, if you want to calculate kinetic friction, kinetic friction is just mu k into n, coefficient of kinetic friction into normal reaction. Coefficient of kinetic friction is mu. This is something I gave wrong. No? This is kinetic and this is static. So this is not 0 0.2, this is 0 0.4. Static is always greater than kinetic, no? 0 0.4 into 20. So that will be 8. Here it will be 0.2 into 20. So this will be equal to 4 in the first part. In the second part of the question, Adriel, how much is the normal reaction in this case? Zero. No, see, this is the weight which is acting in downwards direction. The surface is exacting a normal reaction over here. So this is the normal reaction which is balancing the weight of the body. So the normal reaction will be equal to the weight of the body, which is 10 into 10, which is equal to the 100. Now you can calculate friction, static friction, which is equal to mu s multiplied by n. How much is mu s? It's 0 0.4 multiplied by n, which is 100. So this will be equal to 40. Force of kinetic friction, it's mu k multiplied by n. So this is equal to 0.2 into 100. So this is equal to 20. So we have all forces. The next thing is, uh, okay, just note it down. Then we'll repeat the same question over an inclined plane. What will happen if block is placed over an inclined Adriel and Marita, uh, were you able to do that homework? Uh, I have a doubt, doubts in a few questions. You have doubts. Adriel, you? Oneep, you I couldn't do all. You couldn't do all. Okay. 
Onif, you were there in the last class? No, sir. Sir, I was expecting that today was the KTG and the thermodynamics class. That's why I came. Yes, sir. I am st starting within four five minutes. Okay, sir. Aji, written? Yes, sir. After this, the next topic is uh, yeah, inclined plane, rough inclined. The next is the rough. So, if you have a rough inclined plane. This inclined plane, angle of inclination is theta. I placed a block here, the mass of the block is here. So the forces which are acting over the block are, this is weight mg, which is acting in downwards direction. Then you can take its component. If this is theta, so this is also theta. This will be mg cos theta. Here it will be the normal reaction n. And this is mg sine theta. Now, the tendency of this block is to move in the downwards direction. So, friction will be acting in the upwards direction. So, here you can write that your normal reaction will be equal to mg cos theta. Your friction is mu n. It's mu into mg cos theta. So, if you are calculating static friction, it will be mu s. If you are calculating kinetic friction, then it will be mu. Which is mu k g cos theta. So for the direction of motion, just remember this thing. Friction will oppose motion. So if motion is down the plane, then friction will act up the plane. But if motion is up the plane, then friction will act down the plane. The direction of friction is just opposite to that of the motion of the motor. Please note it down. Done, sir. After friction, the last force that you should know is pseudo force. To understand pseudo force, you should know what are inertial and what are non inertial things. Adriel Oni written? Yes, sir. So let's start with the frame of reference. Frame of reference. Frame of reference simply means place of observation. This is place of observation. So if you are taking some observation by sitting in a car, then frame of reference for you is a car. If you are, say, observing a car, by standing on the ground. So for you, the frame of reference will be the ground. So frame of reference can be divided into two parts. It could be inertial. Or your frame could be non-inertial. So if you have an inertial frame, that means in an inertial frame, inertial frame means frames at rest or in uniform motion or in uniform motion with respect to earth. So frame which is at rest or in uniform motion with respect to earth are known as inertial frame. So the special thing about inertial frame is you can use Newton's laws in inertial frame. Newton's laws are valid here. Newton's laws are valid. So Newton's laws are valid if you are in inertial frame. In non-inertial frame, non-inertial frame means 
accelerated frames. If you have a frame which is accelerating, accelerated frames with respect to earth. So if you have a frame which is accelerating with respect to earth, then they are known as non-energy frame. Newton's laws are not valid in non-energy. Newton's laws are not valid. So to use Newton's laws in such frames, we use concept of Newton. We use pseudo force. Pseudo force to solve or to use Newton's laws in non-energy. In non frame. So let's start. So I'm giving you an example. And in this example, I'm showing you two observers. Just tell me which observer is in inertial frame and which observer is in non-inertial. This is a block. This block is placed on some truck, which and the truck is accelerating with some acceleration is in this direction. This is the acceleration of the truck. You have two observers. This is observer one. And this is the observer two here. So, Marita, which observer is in inertia? This is ground. Huh? So, which observer is in inertial frame and which observer is in non inertial frame? Marita. Observer one is in inertial frame and observer two is in non inertial frame. So, Adriel, which one of them will observe uh, the pseudo force? One or two? For one. Uh, sorry, two, one two, two, two. two will observe. No. The observer which is in non-inertial frame will experience pseudo force. So this will experience pseudo force. This will observe pseudo force. So this is non-inertial. And this is inertial. Next, how to calculate pseudo force? Say the magnitude of pseudo force is mass of body multiplied by the acceleration of frame. See, you will not multiply body with the acceleration of body. You will multiply it with the acceleration of frame. And the direction is direction is opposite opposite to acceleration of body of frame. Direction of pseudo forces opposite to the acceleration of so that means if this whole system is going to the right hand side, this observer will observe pseudo force. So to calculate pseudo force, the direction over the mass m will be in a direction opposite to that of frame. This is pseudo, and its magnitude will be mass of the body multiplied by the acceleration. See one more example, just to learn how to apply pseudo force. Say this is a box, this is a lift, it's going upward with an acceleration A and I block placed a block of mass M here. So the weight of the block is acting in downwards direction. Normally action is acting in upwards direction and your observer is inside the lift. There is no observer outside the lift. They're solving with respect to observer within the lift. So this observer within the accelerating lift is basically in non-inertial frame. So it will observe a pseudo force. And what will be the direction of that pseudo force? Since the system is going upwards, so pseudo force will be acting in downwards direction. 
Now, if I write, ask you to write the equation of motion, since system is going upwards, you will take upwards as positive. Minus mg, minus this pseudo force, which is equal to mass of body multiplied by. Marita, what is the acceleration of this box with respect to this observer? Uh, so it, it will be uh, unbalanced force that is with the force with which no no i was just asking what is the acceleration of this mass m with respect to this observer which is inside the lift uh, zero zero because the person which is inside the lift is at rest with respect to the box the box is accelerating with respect to an observer on the ground. But for an observer inside the lift, the box is at rest. So acceleration is zero. So you can write that normally action is mg plus pseudo force. So the normally action is it's mg plus pseudo force. How much is pseudo force? Pseudo force is mass into acceleration. So this is how we apply this uh, pseudo force in non energy frame. Note it down. Let's do some questions from the PYQ based on the same concept. So at the end, we are calculating the pseudo force with respect to what? And normally action? No, sir, with respect to the person or? Uh... Uh, see, the normally action will have same value, whether you solve it with respect to a person on the ground or you solve it with respect to a person inside the lift. That will not change. But the equation will change due to the acceleration thing. So N will remain same, whether you solve the problem with respect to ground or with respect to a person inside the lift. But acceleration will change in different circumstances. Acceleration will be different. So how do we identify the cases in which we have to apply pseudo force? Just by looking at the frame, if your observer is sitting on the ground, then don't apply pseudo force. But you, if your observer is on an accelerating frame, your observer is sitting on a bus which is accelerating, your observer is uh, on an inclined plane which is accelerating, then use pseudo force. Okay, sir. And there's one more thing, Walter. You can solve all problems in both the frames. You can solve the same problem with respect to an observer on the ground also, you'll get the same answer. But when you put your observer on the accelerating frame, the problems get easier. The number of steps gets reduced. Okay, okay. The last in the last example, let's do that. Yeah.
So Marita, like you were asking us, uh, how to decide in which, when we have to use pseudo force. So I solve this problem for this observer, for this observer O2. Let's solve the same problem for an observer on the ground, for this observer. So when I solve for this observer, no need to apply pseudo force. This observer is an inertial frame. So what you will do is you will just take normally action n minus mg. And for this observer, the block is not at rest. It's moving up for this accelerating. So that will be ma. So you can write that n is equal to ma. Is it clear? You'll get the okay, same yes. answer. Okay. So that's your choice in which frame you want to solve. But if you have an accelerating frame, if you put your observer in accelerating frame, they will have less number of steps. It will be easier to solve. Okay, sir. I believe you must have written it, huh? Let's move on to the next slide. Yeah, this one. This is mass. So uh, this is mass m. It's placed over an inclined plane, and the and this is a frictionless plane. So what should happen if I place a mass, a block over an inclined plane, which is frictionless? What should happen with the block? It should remain at rest, or it should slide down. Haji. It should slide down. But the question says you are accelerating the inclined plane so that the block remains stationary. So Adriel, by accelerating this frame, which extra force is coming into the system, which is balancing this block? Pseudo force. Pseudo force. So let's start with an observer on the inclined plane. So if inclined plane is accelerating in the right-hand side direction, this block will experience a pseudo force in the left-hand side direction. Uni, what will be the magnitude of that pseudo force? Uneeb. Yes, sir. So mass into acceleration. Mass into acceleration. Next, what you can do is, if this is alpha, then this is corresponding angle. This is also alpha. You can take components. You can take one component upwards, which is MA cos alpha. And you can take another component here, which is M A sin alpha. And this is the normal reaction. So normal reaction N will be, it's M A sin alpha. And if you take this weight, you can resolve not, not this. There's weight also, the weight of the block. It's acting in downwards direction. We can resolve this weight also. This is alpha. We can resolve it in this direction. This will be mg cos alpha. And here it will be mg sin alpha. So if the block is not accelerate, so this block is not sliding, that means force acting up the inclined plane is equal to force acting down the inclined plane. The force acting up the inclined plane is MA cos alpha and the force acting down the inclined plane is MG sin alpha. So what you can do is you can simply cancel this M with M and you can say, uh, yes, your A is G sin alpha over cos alpha. Sin by cos is tan. So you can say that A is G tan alpha. Is it? So this is how we use the concept of pseudo force when you have object placed on inclined. It's no data. If this is a rough surface, then one more force will come into play and that is friction. Nothing else will change.
yeah written so that was about fbd that i wanted to discuss uh, the next topic that we should start today is thermodynamics and ktg so thermodynamics is very theoretical so i'm taking Yeah, so I will be mixing three topics basically: thermal properties, kinetic theory of gas, and thermodynamics. So these three are theoretical topics, and they are very much interconnected. Easy topics have very good weightage. See, the thermal properties are very big topic. So thermal properties have everything like specific heat, expansion, transfer of heat, radiation, and everything. The maximum weightage in thermal properties, KTG and thermodynamics, is KTG plus thermodynamics. So from thermal properties, we're doing only those those topics which we will need in KTG and thermodynamics now. So the portion of thermal properties that you will be using in KTG and thermodynamics is this specific. So from thermal properties, you should be knowing what is specific heat. You must know what is this thing, uh, water equivalent, what is latent heat, and then we can solve all the problems. So specific. Heat. We use the concept of specific heat when you wanted to calculate heat required to change the temperature. When the temperature of the body is changing and you want to calculate heat, then we use this concept, the concept of specific heat. So if you have a mass M of body and you want to change its temperature by delta T, then the heat required will be proportional to mass of body and temperature. But along with the mass of body and temperature, the heat required will depend upon the nature of material also. See, I give you two examples. Let's say uh, we have water and we have iron container. We provide, we take the same mass of water and same mass of iron. We provide same amount of heat to them, but the temperature of iron will change very fast as compared to water. Both have same masses. You're providing the same amount of heat. Still, the temperature is changing by different amounts. So, the amount by which the temperature will change will not only depend upon mass and temperature, but will also depend upon the nature of material. And the nature of material is the specific heat. So, that is a simple relation to calculate specific heat. Delta Q is Cm delta T, or you can write this as Mc delta T. C is the specific heat. So, when you want to calculate the SI unit, it's joule per kg per cal. In CGS, the CGS unit of heat is not joule, it's calorie. So it's calorie per gram per degree Celsius. That is the CGS unit. The next is molar specific heat. Molar specific heat is this. If you want to calculate the specific or heat to change the temperature of gas, then instead of mass, we prefer number of moles. And this is the portion which gets connected to the kinetic theory of gas and eventually to thermodynamics. So for gas, the heat required is Nc delta T, where N is number of moles, C is molar specific heat, and delta T is change in temperature. So the unit will change. Huh? The unit of this C will be joule. Instead of kg, you will write per mole, and instead of and the Kelvin inverse as it is. So molar specific heats are of two types, Cp and Cv, that we will discuss when we start the uh, this thing, Kg. So molar specific heat is not just two types, Cp and Cv, it's of five, four or five types. We'll discuss in KTG and thermodynamics, what are those types. So a very, very simple problem. Calculate heat required to change temperature of 10 kg of water from 10 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. Specific heat is given. So if mass of water is given, initial temperature is given, final temperature is given. You just have to calculate Mc delta T and that will be the heat required. After a specific heat, there is one more term. It's very rarely used, but you can see this term in question. That's thermal heat capacity. So what is thermal heat capacity? It's basically the combination of mass and specific heat. So when you calculate heat using thermal heat capacity, then you write S into delta T. Instead of MC, you write S into delta T. So that's thermal heat capacity or heat capacity. There's one more thing, which is water equal. So when we use water equivalent, uh, don't go to add this detail. Water, when you have water equivalent and delta Q is just W into delta T. So if water equivalent is given, change in temperature is given, heat is just water equivalent multiplied by delta T. And remember one thing, the CGS unit of water equivalent is gram. 
and when water equivalent is given also do, always do your calculation in cgs way so if water equivalent is given never never do your calculation si unit always prefer cgs way for heat si is joule cgs is calorie so when you have water equivalent your answer will always come into the calorie see the simple example water equivalent is 50 g heat required to change the temperature from 10 degree celsius to 60 degree celsius a simple thing so delta t is 60 minus 10 which is 50 and delta q will be mass into water equivalent multiplied by delta t 50 into 50 2500 calorie now if you want to convert this in gram now you can do this thing na 2500 multiplied by 4.2 this is the heat required is it clear only adrenal marita yes sir yes sir can you explain specific heat capacity so yeah i got specific, disconnected then okay specific heat capacity is nothing just the product of mass and specific heat that's it the product of mass and specific heat is thermal capacity or heat capacity you saying heat capacity or specific heat so specific heat specific heat we use this concept when you are required to calculate heat to change the temperature of a body so if you have a given mass of a body and you want to change its temperature by amount delta t so the amount of heat required is proportional to the product of mass and temperature difference but the heat required along with mass and temperature difference will depend upon the nature of body also so when you remove this proportionality sign you get a c which is specific heat and it depends upon the nature of material so it will be mc into delta t this is it or you can calculate c which is delta q by m into delta t also so specific heat is it depends upon the nature of material let's say if you have same mass of water and uh, iron you are supplying you want to change the temperature by the same amount but for iron you need to supply more heat than water for sorry for water you need to apply supply more heat than iron just because of the difference of the specific okay just note you know please the this specific heat is important just because uh, you can use this specific heat with conservation of mechanical energy also you will be using this specific heat with capacitance also you will use specific heat with resistance also
Remember this thing. Whenever you have water equivalent, you have to do your calculation in CGS rate. Never use SI unit. So, I have written up to here. Marita, Adril. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, calorie meter. So, calorie meter is simple device. It's just a vessel, a copper vessel, in which some water or any other liquid is. You can put liquid, and there is one thermometer here. You just want to make this thing insulated. So, what you do is you put this copper vessel into a wooden jacket. And within bit in between the copper vessel and the wooden jacket, you put some wool into it. So this is the copper vessel. This is the wooden jacket. In between these two, you are putting wool here. So that is the calorie meter. So principle of calorie meter. The simple principle: heat loss is equal to heat gain. Means if you are mixing iron at 100 degrees Celsius with water and 20 degrees Celsius, so what will happen is iron will lose heat and water will gain heat. So if I if we are considering the conservation of energy, then heat lose by iron is equal to heat gain by water. So that is the principle of calorie meter: heat loss for heat gain. Using this principle, you uh, you can measure the specific heat of metals using this calorie meter. So uh, just no need to draw the calorie meter. Just write the principle of calorie meter. We'll do two questions from here. So two types of questions come from calorie meter. The one is an easy question, NCRT based question, where you have to calculate the specific heat of particular material. And there is one more type of question, which is based on mixing of liquids. So first we'll do NCRT based question. Then we'll see how mixing of liquids can be done using this calorie. Okay. So this is the question I was talking about. This is a question from NCRT. Just note it down. Please note down the question. Okay, so uh, Adriel, so you have three objects here. Huh? One is aluminium at 100 degrees Celsius. 
another is copper and third one is water copper and water both are at 20 degrees celsius so when you mix aluminium and copper which will gain heat and which will lose heat that is aluminium will lose heat hmm. copper will gain, water will run water will gain heat right marita what is the final temperature of the system like copper water aluminium what is the final temperature of the system Uh, so I'm saying if you mix aluminium, water and copper, then what is the final temperature of the mixture? Uh, 23 degrees Celsius. 23 degrees Celsius. So we just be using the principle of calorie meter, which is heat lost by aluminium is equal to heat gained by copper plus water. So I won't be doing the this cal whole calculation. I will just stop at this reading, this equation. Heat lost by aluminium is mass of aluminium. Specific heat of aluminium into change in temperature. While heat gained by uh, copper and water is mass into specific heat into change in temperature. This is for the copper and this one is for the water. See, I'm using modulus here because the change in temperature can comes out to be negative. But since we have already decided that left hand side is lost and right hand side is gained, then that negative sign is of no significance. That will just confuse you. That's why I'm using a modulus here. So mass of aluminium is this. Specific heat of aluminium is unknown. Final temperature was 23 and initial was 100. So see, it will comes out to be negative. That's why I put this into the modulus. Here, mass of copper is this. Specific heat is this. Change in temperature is 23 minus 20. Similarly, for water also. The rest you can calculate. So in this type of things where you... Uh, in the initially initial part of the question, you divide this is gain and this is lost. Then no need to take negative sign. That negative sign will uh, make issues, uh, create issues in your calculations. Oni, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, just do it. Then we'll de see how the mixing of liquids can be solved. Last to last year, there was one question on mixing of liquids. So let's see how the mixing of liquids did this. Written, can I scroll it down? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll do state change later, later, later. See, these are the type of questions that one can get, get on this thing, uh, specific heat. See, this will mix your work energy and power and the specific heat. Note down the second question and just write your answer in chat. Second question. Note down the question, please.
आंसर्स माल्टा पुनीप सो द इजी क्वेश्चन Are you solving it, Adriel, Marita, Puneep? Yes, sir. Yes. So let's do it. Okay, Adriel gets some answer. Unib, okay. I got answer from Marita. Adriel, Unib. Sir, I'm sorry. Okay, see, I'm showing the calculations. So see, the the question says the bullet is this is mass of the bullet, this is speed of the bullet, and it strikes a fixed wooden target. Half of its kinetic energy gets converted into heat. So first, calculate the kinetic energy of the bullet. It's half mv square. So see the answer is in CGS units. So what we can do is we can convert this velocity of 210 meter per second into CGS. Marita, the issue that you are getting is you uh, you have done some mistake while converting the units. So mass is in grams. So I can take velocity in CGS. So I get your kinetic energy into work. The heat energy is half of the kinetic energy. So the half of this is the heat energy. Now the half of this heat energy, the half of the kinetic energy, get converted into heat. And if you have heat, so you can calculate change in temperature, which is M C delta T also. So this is mass into a specific heat into delta T. So what you can do is one by four into five into the square. This mass of the bullet is five gram. The specific heat is 0 0.03 into change in temperature. So from here you can calculate the change in temperature, which comes out to be eighty-seven point. So yes, Adriel was correct, eighty-seven point five. Yes, Marita. Now we understand where you were making mistake. Oh uh, yes, sir. You mix the SI and the non-SI units, huh? Yes, sir. Puneep, is it clear? Yes. Sir. Okay, good. Do it.
you can get same type of questions on capacitors also you will calculate energy stored in the capacitor then it will say okay half or 10 percent of this energy is getting converted into heat so we'll calculate heat by 10 percent of the energy of capacitor which is half cv square and then you will equate it mc delta t to calculate the raise in temperature same can be repeated with the uh, uh, resistor also So this MC so did... please show the question. Yes. Uh, so why why did we multiply hundred to two ten? Mm -hmm. Because the mass is in gram, and the speed is in meter per second. So I convert this in centimeter per second. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing all calculation in CGS because specific heat is in CGS. That's why. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Oneep, done? Yes, sir. Sure. So uh, let's move on to the next thing, which is very, very important. Yeah, this one. So we call this topic as mixture of liquids. Huh? Just like the first question that we did on this uh, specific heat, huh? that aluminum and the copper and the water work. So instead of solids and liquids, this type of question will mix many liquids. So the method is the same, which is principle of calorimetry, heat gain is equal to heat loss. But if you want to simplify your calculations, the temperature of the mixture is simply M1, S1, T1, mass of the first liquid, specific heat of the second liquid, temperature of the first liquid, M2, is a shortcut method s2 t2 divided by its m1 s1 plus m2 s2 this is the temperature of mixture in the previous question this temperature of mixture was 23 degrees celsius now this formula is not restricted to only two mixture of two liquids or two objects, you can uh, extend it to the mixture of three or four liquids as well. Now solve this question and tell me what is the answer. A similar question was there in 2020, if I am not wrong, 2020 J exam. You can solve this question using uh, that principle of calorimetry also, heat gain equal to heat lose, but that will be very, very lengthy. If we use this formula, it will save your time. Do it. You have three minutes left. Okay, let's solve it together. Huh? So the temperature of A is 10 degrees Celsius, B is 22 degrees Celsius, and C is 32 degrees Celsius. The first A and B are mixing. 
so the temperature of the mixture is 15 degree celsius so we will write this as m1 mass m specific heat of a temperature of a which is 10 plus mass of second which is equal huh? equal masses specific heat of b into temperature of b which is 22 degree celsius divided by m into sa plus m into sp so see this m m m m will get cancelled out you have 10 sa plus 22 sb by sa plus sb which is equal to 15. So what you can do is you can just multiply it here. We have to calculate a relation between SA and SP. So this will be 15 SA plus 15 SB is equal to 10 SA plus 22 SB. So if you take it to the left hand side, you have 5 SA is equal to 7 sp that's the first equation huh? then is mixing b and c and the temperature of the mixture is 26 degrees so we'll write 26 is b and c mass of b is m a specific heat of b and the temperature of b is 22 plus mass of c is m a specific heat is SC into change in temperature is 32 divided by, okay, I got one answer from Marita. Okay, Marita, I'm just checking. Huh? M into SB plus M into SC. So when you cross, see this M, 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 M will get cancelled out. So you have 26 SB. plus 26 SC is 22 SB plus 32 SC. So this will come to the left and you have 4 SB. This will go to the right and this is 6 SC. This is second equation. Am I right? This is 4. And this is six, yes. Now, what will be the temperature when A and C are mixed? When A and C are mixed, it's mass of A, specific heat of A, temperature of A. What is the temperature of A? That's 10. A and C you are mixing. So mass of C is M. A specific heat of C is SC. And the temperature of C is 32. Into mass of S. A plus mass of SC that you are supposed to calculate. See, M will get cancelled out. You just need SA and SC. So see, your SA you can write in terms of SB. SC you can write in terms of SB. So from here, you can write that your SA is 7 by 5 SB. And from here, you can write that your SC is 4 by 6 SB. So when you do these substitutions, SA is uh, 7 by 5 SB. Into 10. SC is 4 by 6 SB. Into 32 divided by SA plus SC, so SA is 7 by 5 SB. Plus SC, which is 4 by 6 SB. So this SB, SB, SB gets cancelled out, so you can calculate this number now. Is it clear, Adriel, Unib? Yes, sir. No, no, no. That is an important question. You can get these type of questions in your exams. Basically, the mixture is important it's because uh, you get questions on mixture of liquids, 
which is covered under thermal properties and you get question on mixture of gases also mixture of gases are under ktg and thermodynamics that's why mixture is important we will get similar type of results when we will study gases in thermodynamics and ktg these all three are interconnected thermal ktg thermodynamics when we teach in class 11 then we have to go according to the school syllabus so that's why we don't merge these topics but when we do this in for j we merge all these three topics Marita, control these calculation mistakes, huh? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Adriel, the exact, I'm telling the exact answer. The exact answer is 17.1, right? You are correct. It's 1, 7, 17 point. Yeah, can I scroll it down? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, the next thing that you should know in thermal properties that will be useful in thermodynamics as well is this term. Uh, where is it? Hmm, latent heat. So we use latent heat during state change so during state change there is no change in temperature during state change no change in temperature temperature remains constant so the energy that you are providing during state change gets used in increasing the interatomic separation so there are a few examples of state change like zero degree celsius ice get converted into zero degree celsius water solid converted into liquid liquid get converted into vapor or solid get converted into vapor so fusion vaporization sublimation and desublimation and all these are examples of the state change the important thing about state change is there is no change in temperature during state change like when ice melt the temperature of ice remains zero degrees celsius so the temperature of ice is zero degrees celsius when it converted into water the temperature of water remains zero degrees celsius so the heat that you are providing is just increasing the interatomic separation. The separation between the difference between the three states, solid, liquid, and gases, is nothing but the increase in the change in uh, sorry, the interatomic separation. In solid, interatomic separation is very small, liquid it's a bit higher, in gases it's very, very large. So the energy or the heat energy that you are providing is just increasing the interat interatomic separation, not the temperature. So the heat involved during state change is latent heat. Like to change temperature, we use specific heat. During state change, we use latent heat. How much is latent heat? It's ml, mass into the latent heat. So that's mass of body or L is latent heat. That depends upon the nature of material. So we have three types of latent heat. Latent heat of fusion, latent heat of vaporization, and latent heat of sublimation. SI unit is joule per kg. CGS is calorie per gram. So there is this one interesting graph you will can find many questions on this graph also. So this is the graph between the temperature and the heat. On x-axis, you have heat and on y-axis, you have temperature. So uh, see, this is ice at minus 10 degrees Celsius. When I provide some heat to the ice, what will happen? The temperature of the ice will change. So the temperature is on y-axis, so it's changing. Change up to here, up to zero degrees Celsius. So the heat supplied is mass of ice 
specific heat of ice into change in temperature because you are changing the temperature now. Now, when you provide more heat at 0 degree Celsius, the temperature will not change, state will change. So you have 0 degree ice to 0 degrees walls, 0, 0 degree Celsius water. The heat required from this to this is ml, mass into latent to the field. Now, if you heat it further, then its temperature will change. Its temperature will change from 0 degree Celsius to 100 degree Celsius. And the heat required is mc delta t, mass of body, specific heat of water into change in temperature. Then again, you will heat, up, heat it, it will, the temperature will remain constant, state will change, 100 degrees Celsius water to 100 degrees Celsius state. So the heat is ml, mass into the body into the latent heat of vaporization. From this graph, you can get two types of question. The first type of question is on slope. What is the significance of slope? So if I calculate slope, this is x-axis, theta. So the slope will be tan theta. How much is tan theta? Tan theta is perpendicular upon base. How much is perpendicular? Perpendicular is this line, which is change in temperature, delta T. How much is base? Base is this one, which is heat, which is MC delta T. MC delta T. So delta T will get cancelled out with the delta T and you are left with just MC. Delta T will cancel this delta T and this will be 1 by MC. So you can say that slope is inversely proportional to the specific heat. If you increase the specific heat, slope will decrease. No, no, no. This graph is very, very important for example. No, no,
see uh, from this topic latent heat it's very rare that you get question on uh, just latent heat you will be using latent heat with other concept the best combination of latent heat is latent heat with refrigerator latent heat with heat engine and latent heat in mixture so all those combinations will do in thermodynamics so not i'm not discussing any numerical on latent heat right now we'll do it in thermodynamics So everyone have written up to here? Yes, sir. Okay. Next we will do. Yeah, you should do this question. This one. You can get these type of questions on specific. Solve this question and write your answer in chat. This is basically a mixture of ice and water. Answers. So you have 0 0.5 kg of ice at 0, 0 degrees Celsius. It's mixed with 0 0.3 kg of water and 50 degrees Celsius in a container. Resulting temperature is this. So you are mixing ice in water. The resultant is what? Is it ice or water? Only? Water. Water. Let's do it. It's just easy question. Specific heat of water is given. So always keep this mixture in mind, liquid, 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 solid, then you will get mixture of gases. Adriel, Marita, you're solving it. Yes, sir. Okay, I got one answer from Marita. Adriel Unib answers.
Maida, usually this is some thousands of joules per kg. Okay, sir. See, here, if you are mixing ice and water, then ice will gain heat and water will lose heat. So you can say that heat lost by water because water is at 50 degrees Celsius is equal to the heat gained by ice at 0 degrees Celsius. So heat lost by water is mass of water into a specific heat of water into change in temperature. Heat gained by ice. Ice will ice is at 0 degrees Celsius and get converted into water at 6.7. So ice will gain heat into two steps. First, it will melt. Then its temperature will rise. I'm repeating again. When zero degrees Celsius ice absorbs some heat, it will absorb heat into two steps. In the first step, it will melt. In the second step, its temperature will rise. So this is mass of ice into latent heat, mass of water into specific heat into change in temperature. So this is for the water. Mass of water, specific heat of water, change in temperature. Initially is 50, final is 6.7. I'm using modulus because it's heat loss. Mass of ice into latent heat of fusion into this radiant of fusion. So this is 3.35 into 10 raised power 5 joules per kg. So 335,000 joules per kg. So Adriel is getting the right answer. I believe Mar Marita is also getting the right answer. Yes, Marita is correct. So the order of magnitude is 10 raised power 5. Oneeb, is it clear? Yes, sir. See, there is one more topic in thermal properties, which is not in our schedule. But if you get time, you should, uh, that's an easy topic. You should read it. And that is thermal expansion. So you have three types of expansion, linear expansion, superficial expansion, and volumetric expansion. So it's not a part of our schedule. So I'm not discussing thermal expansion. But if you get time, you should read this topic. This is easy and you can get questions from thermal expansion. Basically, thermal expansion get combined with solids, Young's modulus and all those. Okay, so that was about thermal properties. Now we'll start with thermodynamics. And in thermodynamics only, we will uh, mix this thing with kinetic theory of gas. See, the initial uh, definitions, these are just definitions. So what you can do is you can take just screenshots. I'm explaining them. No need to write. So what is thermodynamics? It's basically the branch which is related to uh, heat energy and water. thermodynamical parameters it's like just like kinematics so when we study kinematics we first study the parameters which are velocity displacement acceleration just like mechanics we have certain parameters in thermodynamics also those permanent parameters are pressure volume temperature internal energy or you can say that thermodynamical parameters basically define the state of the system just like the state of a system in kinematics is defined either in terms of displacement or velocity or acceleration or time. So like parameters of kinematics, you have parameters of thermodynamics. Then you have equation of state. Equation of state means an equation which connect different parameters. In kinematics, the equation of state was like uh, S is ut plus half at square. V square minus u square is 2s. These were equation of states. Or the Newton's motion equation of motion that we write F net is equal to MA. So those were the equation of state. Just like mechanics and thermodynamics, you have thermodynamical parameters, which are pressure, volume, temperature. So equations which are connecting these different thermodynamical parameters are known as equation of state. One example is PV equal to NRT. So it connect pressure, volume, number of moles and temperature. Then we have the next definition of the system and surrounding. So system is just the part of universe which are under observation or you are under your consideration. Like you take gas in some container, you are observing that gas. So for you, that gas is a system. Everything outside the system is environment or you can say surrounding. 
you can divide system into three types it can be open it can be closed or it can be insulated open system means this is a system which can exchange both energy and matter with the surrounding so if i take water in this glass then this water can exchange heat with the surrounding as well as water molecules can go outside the glass in the form of vapor also so it is exchanging both matter as well as heat so we call this as an open system now if i cover this glass with something like if i cover it by my hand so what will happen is now it cannot exchange matter but since the walls are conducting it can exchange heat so it will become closed system and is a system if there is a system which can neither trans uh, uh share heat or matter with the surrounding and we call that type of system as the insulated system so uh for all the processes that will be studying in the thermodynamics our system will be gas in a cylinder that's it so whenever we say system by system the thing that should come in your mind is a gas which is placed in a cylinder that is your system in thermodynamics sorry So in thermodynamics, we have uh, equilibrium. Three types of equilibrium we have. We have a thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium means your system will not exchange heat with the surrounding. It could be in mechanical equilibrium. That means pressure is constant, net force is zero. Or it could be in chemical equilibrium. That will study in chemistry. We'll don't study this in uh, physics. So if a system is in all these three type of equilibrium, then we say the system is in thermodynamic equilibrium. So thermodynamic equilibrium is a subset of all these three things: thermal equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium, and chemical equilibrium. The next is internal energy, which is very important. So this is the internal energy and specific heat, which is a link between thermodynamics and KT. A specific heat is the link between these three branches: thermodynamics, thermal properties, KTG. You can connect them using specific heat. Thermodynamics and inter and uh, KTG. You will connect them using internal energy. So, what is internal energy? It is the total energy content of the system. If you have a system, the total energy content of the system is internal energy. Total energy means if you have a system, means gas. Uh, you have gas in some container. Then, what type of energy that gas can have? Its molecules can have kinetic energy. its molecule can have potential energy you can further divide kinetic energy into many categories like the gas molecules can move in straight lines so it can have translational energy the gas molecules can rotate so it will have rotational energy the gas molecules can vibrate so it can have vibrational kinetic energy or gas molecules can exert force over each other and due to that force the energy will be potential energy so internal energy can be internal kinetic or it can be internal potential internal kinetic energy can be translational vibrational rotational and there is important thing internal kinetic energy depends only on temperature so if you are increasing the temperature of the gas you are increasing the internal kinetic energy if the temperature of the gas is constant means internal kinetic energy is constant internal potential energy depends upon intermolecular interaction and the most important thing in 99.9% cases your system is an ideal gas for an ideal gas internal potential energy is zero so internal energy is sum of kinetic and potential but for an ideal gas internal potential energy is zero so internal energy is just kinetic so adrial the intern can i say that internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature so internal kinetic no just internal i'm saying internal energy total internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature is this statement correct no why why not uh, uh sir other external properties as well what type what are the two types of internal energies that a gas can have mm, kinetic energy and potential energy but when we talk about the ideal gas then what how much is the potential energy zero so what is left then the internal kinetic. and internal kinetic energy depends yes. only on temperature temperature okay. so if you have an ideal gas and i say temperature change is zero that means change in internal energy will be zero this will be very very helpful when we study isothermal process and there is one more thing internal energy the change in internal energy depend only over the initial and the final state of the system it does not depends upon the path 
So even if you change path, the internal energy will not change. Delta U is UB minus UA. So this is A, here internal energy is UA. This is B, here internal energy is UB. When you go to A to B by any path, the change in internal energy will not change. And this is very, very important. When you look at questions of thermodynamics, which are based on first law, almost in every numerical, in one way or other, they are using this concept, the internal energy. Change in internal energy depends only over the initial and final position, not on the path. So please do one thing, just no, take screenshots. Take screenshot. So can I go to system again? Then so. In the whole discussion, this the theoretical part that we have discussed, this is the most important part that you will be using in the very first. The concept of internal energy, kinetic potential. And this part is super crucial. This thing and this thing. On this Friday, I will take one extra class. And we have to finish thermodynamics till then. See, there are few very, very uh, scoring topics in JE. Those are thermodynamics, KTG, then it's whole of that modern physics of class 12, semiconductors, these all are scoring topics. Uh, so, will we be learning Newton's laws of cooling? Newton's law of cooling, uh, transfer of heat, na, that will do after thermodynamics and KTG. The transfer of heat will do. Okay. Because when you do transfer of, uh, it's, 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 uh, can be connected to current electricity. So when Amna will cover current electricity, I'll be starting this thing.